Next month in Arizona, the U.S. military will begin training Ukrainian pilots on F-16 fighter jets. The pilots have been in San Antonio this month learning English first before they train on the jets themselves. The move comes in coordination with the Netherlands, Denmark and Norway, who said they will provide Ukraine with jets from their own supply. Right now, an F-16 training center in Romania is being looked at as another location to train Ukrainian pilots. Joining us now is the Minister of Defense of the Netherlands, Kaiser Olengren. Minister, thank you for being here this morning. We appreciate it. So what is the, from your point of view, from the Dutch point of view, what is the status of these F-16s and how soon they might be in the hands of Ukrainians? Well, as soon as possible, of course, but naturally, first they have to be trained and not only the pilots, but also the crew, the technicians and everyone you need to fly an F-16 and to fight in an F-16. And we really don't know how long it will take to do this training. So we estimate six to eight months, which is really, really fast if you compare it to the trainings we do with our pilots, your pilots. Uh, but it depends on a lot of factors. So that's the time frame. The Danes have started. The United States is going to start. We're working on the training center in Romania to have it up and running as soon as possible. Uh, and the actual delivery of the jets that will be some, starting somewhere next year. As you know well, as the Biden administration knows well, for almost a year and a half now, President Zelensky has been calling for these F-16s, as he puts it, to close the skies to protect Ukrainian airspace from Russia. Can you just lay out a little bit for people who wonder why it's taken this long? What all has gone into getting us to this place? Finally, perhaps from Zelensky's point of view, a little too late. Yes, well, we see how this war has developed. Uh, I think we started by giving, you know, from our own stocks, uh, weapons, but not in the not at, at all like the F-16s. Uh, later on, it was tanks, and now it is the F-16s. Uh, it's an American capability, so we, of course we need the approval from uh, Washington D.C. Uh, and it's also also for us an important capability. We're doing the transitioning to the F-35, and that's the reason that we can deliver the F-16s uh, once we've done the transition. Same goes for Norway, same goes for Denmark. So these things do take time. But I think the most important thing is uh, the signal that we're sending, not only to Kiev, but also to Moscow uh, and the Kremlin. And that is that we are there and we will be behind the Ukrainians for as long as it takes. And we will provide them with the weapons and with the ammunition. And we will also work on strengthening their armed forces, also for after the war, because Russia is not going anywhere. So first they have to be defeated, and then uh, Ukraine has to be safe as an important partner to NATO countries. So, Madam Minister, that's exactly the topic I wanted to go to. Last week at the UN, we heard from President Biden saying the U.S., of course, would be there with Kyiv. But we're seeing Republicans in Washington really questioning whether or not they should continue to fund uh, the war effort there in, in Ukraine. Uh, are you, is Europe, which to this point has been so united, even though the, this counteroffensive has been slow, winter's approaching again, do you, is Europe getting worried that the United States won't be there if this war keeps dragging on? Well, yes, of course, and we are hearing these things, uh, and that, that does worry us, because I think that we all must be aware of the fact that the Russians have to be stopped in Ukraine. It's just not, it's not just any regional conflict between Ukraine and Russia. This is Russia. This is a nuclear power. This is an ally of China. Uh, so this is something that concerns all of us in Europe, but also here in the United States. And one thing's for sure, Ukraine cannot fight this war without our support. If we stop delivering weapons, if we stop the funding, uh, then Ukraine has to stop fighting. Uh, and that's why it's so extremely important that we keep our unity uh, and that we keep on finding the budget, finding the weapons, finding the ammunition to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Are you seeing any kind of cracks within the NATO community like we're seeing in the Republican Party here. Um, and then um, what I worry is the expectations that people might have from hearing the F-16s are coming. I'm fairly familiar with the training process, which the United States takes very seriously. I'm sure the countries of NATO do too. I mean, this, first they've got to learn English. Then they have to learn how to fly and target and do all the things that are a long process. Absolutely. So um, first, is NATO still unified as we have seen it be? And second, um, what what is really the timeline? It's a couple of years at least, isn't it? 
Now, your first question, is NATO still unified? I think yes, we are. But of course, NATO is a big group of countries. There are 31 countries now, 32 when Sweden joins. Uh, and there are always elections somewhere. There are always domestic issues somewhere. But I think in the end, we are united. Uh, and if you listen to the Secretary General, Jan Stoltenberg, he's always stressing this point. Uh, and I think we've also seen that it's not just the United States. It's also all European allies who are stepping up, who are increasing their defense budgets, who are really doing everything they can to make sure that Ukraine uh, can, can win this, this war. And on the F-16s, you know, it's not, it's not just one capability that's going to make the difference. It's not just the F-16 that's going to make Ukraine win the war. But we know they need it because, you know, without the air dominance, it's impossible, I think, to, to win the war. Uh, there is a sort of stalemate in the air between uh, Russia and Ukraine. So the F-16 will add that extra to the air defense uh, of Ukraine. Uh, and of course, we all know it. We know it's, a, and it's an excellent weapon system. Uh, so that's why it's so important that they do get it. But we have to take it seriously because I agree. Uh, if you know how to fly it, but you don't know how to fight it, it's not going to make a difference um, for them. So given the situation, given what you've just described, is it just simply stopping, is the end game just simply stopping Russian aggression? What is the end game in your view here? Is it getting Russia completely out of Ukraine? What, how do you see or envision this thing coming to a close? Uh, well, we've said since the beginning, it's, it's up to Ukraine to decide on that. Uh, and I think for, for, uh, for Ukraine, the goal is, is very clear. And, and that means getting Russia out of Ukraine territory, uh, including uh, Crimea. Uh, and if you see where they're focusing on now, the progress that they're making in the Sporja region, uh, how they're uh, targeting the Crimea, uh, the Black Sea, uh, that is exactly what they're doing. But it's going to take time because the Russian defenses in uh, Ukraine, in the annexed areas, is, is of course very strong. Uh, and Russia has a sort of endless supply uh, of new soldiers, uh, of new weapons. They can build a war economy, which is much more difficult for us uh, compared to, uh, to Russia. So it's not going to be an easy task. But I think that is the goal of, of Ukraine. And once they make enough progress, there might at some point uh, there be, be the start of discussions between, uh, between Russia and Ukraine. But we're not there yet. Madam Minister, mm. Mika has a question for you right there. Yeah, just uh, focusing on uh, the, the stalemate in the air, uh, as you put it, and, and also your answer that it, it's up to Ukraine how this ends. I, I'm just curious, what are the discussions with the partners, the NATO partners, about how far this does go when it comes to providing weapons to Ukraine? Well, are I think this, it's the same debate that, that you've seen here in the United States. Um, we should not just provide them with enough weapons to defend themselves, uh, mm -hmm. but we should provide them with enough weapons to fight back and to push uh, the Russians back. And I think we also have to have some patience. Uh, this does, and this will take time. Uh, this is really, this is a big war. It's on a scale that we have not seen since the Second World War in, in Europe, at least. Um, so it, it does take time, and as I said, Russia uh, and Putin, he can just continue to mobilize, continue to uh, increase production of weapons and, and ammunition. Uh, but uh, but mm. in the end, I think it's, it's very important. This is an, uh, an aggressive state that has annexed, is trying to annex and invade another country. Uh, and that means that it's not only about Ukraine. As important as it is for Ukraine to, you know, to remain a free and democratic country, it's not only about Ukraine. It's also about uh, the values that we have in NATO. It's about a territorial integrity. It's about respecting the UN Charter. Uh, so it's really, really important. So we should not think of this as some, just some regional conflict. We should think of this as a world global power that Russia wants to be with nuclear weapons that is, can be a threat to all of us if they're not stopped in Ukraine and by Ukraine now. We're in the middle of a spending fight over budget right now this week in our Congress and some of the opposition to the legislation that's been put up is to the Ukraine to funding the war there. Some, it's a small number, but there's still enough that can affect this. And some Americans have said tens of billions of dollars, that's a lot of money that we could be spending at home. Are you seeing any cracks in support 
with the public in the Netherlands or within your parliament as well? No, I think in, in the Netherlands the sport is really broad. Uh, it's, um, we're having elections in November and you see very broadly we have lots of political parties. Uh, in general people support uh, uh, continuing the support to, to, to Ukraine. So we don't see that but we do see the debate here in the United States uh, and I really hope that also the American people will see that it is in their own tr interest to stop the Russians by providing the weapons to Ukraine. I mean, we're not fighting the war. The Ukrainians are fighting for us. Minister of Defense of the Netherlands, Kaisa Olengren, thank you for being here. I want to point out, I think all defense ministers should wear Nike Air Max shoes. I thank think you. That, should be, that should be the new standard. <laughs> and maybe more women. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? absolutely. I agree. Great to have you here. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thank you. Still